It's amazing. What we're going to do right now is we're going to do a walk around of the aircraft. This is the first time that there has been an actual interactive uh, pre-flight walk around of an aircraft in any flight simulator as far as I know. Um, so let's go ahead and start the walk around. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to, we've got the uh, flap down here. We're going to wiggle it, make sure that it's nice and, that it moves just a little bit, but it's nice and solid. I'm going to go ahead and grab the aileron, move it up and down, make sure it travels freely. Uh, we're going to look at the auxiliary fuel tank. We're just going to visually verify that, yeah, we got gas in it. Av gas is blue. And then we are also going to, and this, this is just a kick in the pants, because this is like actually pre-flighting an actual aircraft. And this is all the stuff that you don't get to do in a flight simulator most of the time. Now we're going to look under this tank, and we're going to use our little uh, bottle here to tap the fuel. We're going to fill this up, and we're going to make sure that there's no, um, no sediment or water in the gas. Yeah, looks good. And this is all, it, it, it's all simulated, you know, this all has to be done. Uh, landing light looks good. There's some fingerprints and smudges on it, but yeah, let's see. And oh, and I'm also on a, a new rig. I've got a, uh, I, f I finally got a new computer after all these years. And this thing has got, um, I've got an NVIDIA uh, RTX 3070 Ti in it and uh, an Intel i9, so it's blazing, blazing fast. Uh, undo the tie down here. Okay, let's look at the main gas tank. Yep, we're all full. So the reason I've gotten really heavy back in the flight sim is because an opportunity has come my way. Uh, the FAA has made some changes to their medical flight requirements uh, for people that have uh, diabetes. And I should be able to get a fully unrestricted um, class one uh, medical certificate. I've been talking to one of the prestigious airline flight schools down here in the Bay Area, and they would have an opportunity for me to get all of my uh, commercial flight training done and work for them as a flight instructor full time. So I am in the um, I'm in the middle of trying to get that all taken care of. Yeah, it is. It is pretty amazing. I'm uh, I'm stoked. Yeah, again, it's not 100% in the bag yet. We have to make sure that you know that I get my medical certificate, and I have to finance uh, almost. Uh, we have to take out a loan I could almost buy a house with <laughs> in order to uh, to get the training done, but. Um, Within a year, I would be a full-time flight instructor, and I'd be able to start uh, paying that back and uh, making pretty good money. And I love airplanes. I love teaching. So we got about, uh, about just under 10, well, maybe about 10 quarts of oil, and the oil's nice and clean looking. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. I'm really uh, serious about it. It's a good, uh, it's a good opportunity. They just, uh, in 2020, uh, the first airline pilot in history with type 1 diabetes um, got his airline transport pilot certificate. So that was a big historical thing. So that, uh, and I have type 2 diabetes, and the, uh, the requirements actually aren't as stringent as that. So um, should, be, should be able to pull this off. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of hard work, though. Tito you know, cover off, tie downs are off. Uh, let's see, this, uh, that landing light looks good. Okay, let's look at, okay, that's full as well. Okay. 
good. Yeah, uh, the sounds for this aircraft are amazing. The uh, the owner of the company again, he uh, he recorded all of the sounds from his own uh, Comanche. Uh, the the sound of this rolling over the ground is ex is incredibly immersive. There's an awesome YouTube video of him recording the sound. He he pulled um, he pulled his plane uh, behind his truck, and they recorded uh, the wheels rolling over the ground. Different types of ground, like a asphalt, grass, dirt, stuff like that. So when you uh, when you um, are rolling over different types of um, different types of material that's, that's the actual sound of his aircraft being rolled over that okay so we're going to go ahead and we're going to fly up and we're going to take a look at mount shasta uh this is redding california this is where my uh, grandmother lived so i spend a lot of time here uh in real life we have a second home up here so um yeah let's uh let's get rolling Okay, so walk around is complete. I just really quick, I was talking <laughs> while I was looking at the, the tie downs and the wheel chocks. I just want to make sure I've got everything. Yeah, and make sure I've got all the, the planes not tied down. I don't want to try to roll, roll away when I've got uh, a rope tied to the plane. Okay, good deal. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this fired up. I had it running just a few minutes ago, so um, let's go ahead and put the flaps back up. I uh, had it running uh, just a few minutes ago, so the engine's still uh, kind of warm. So it should be pretty easy. Um, pretty easy uh, start sequence. Yeah, and the... Uh, the aircraft's motor itself is is actually modeled as well, so you have to take care of it. You have to take care of the motor because the motor is persistent as well. Um, so if you damage the motor, you know you have to you have to fix the motor, or it will actually uh, degrade over time. So you gotta you gotta handle the airplane gently. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the rotating beacon. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the mixture in all the way. And let's see, I'm going to start the engine on the left tank. Open the throttle just a little bit more. All right, I'm going to verify real quick that we've got fuel pressure when the fuel pump's running. All right, fuel pressure's coming up. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the fuel pump. Okay, I shouldn't have to prime the motor. Uh, we should just be uh, ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch the ignition to both. Okay, you have clear prop. The uh, prop wash blew the door closed. It's amazing. The physics are so real in this thing. I'm going to actually pull the door closed now and latch it. Okay, I'm gonna close both of these little windows. All right, we're gonna let the engine warm up just a little bit. Go ahead and get the avionics master on. Uh, let's see, it's 60 degrees, so we don't need pitot heat, at least not yet anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out. And we're gonna head direct north uh, to Mount Shasta. There you go, good to see you. Good to see you too, Mr. Vortex. How are you doing, my friend? Have you been to the stream before? I, I, I honestly don't know anymore. It's been so long since I've streamed. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay.
I'm in love with this uh, this uh, JPI 800 engine monitor. It's God, it's so nice. Everything you want to know about how each individual cylinder of that, uh, Mr. Vortex. Yeah, I'll see you in person about two. Oh, hey, hey, brother, how you doing, brother Jeff Smith, folks? All right, uh, let's see. All right, so engine is warm. Oh, that's Dad. Oh, hey, Austin, how you doing? Your family, too, so. <laughs> All right. Reading Tower, Comanche 66 Papa, request taxi the active for north departure. Reading Brown, Comanche 66 Papa, with golf request taxi for takeoff north departure. Comanche 66 Papa, taxi to and hold short of runway 34 using taxiway. Contact tower on 119er decimal 8 when ready. Taxi to 34. We'll contact you on 119er point 8 when we're ready to go. Command you 66 Papa. Taxiing hold short runway tree for via taxiway Command 66 Papa. 19.8. All right, so we are going to go ahead and taxi out to runway 34, uh, which is good, because that's pointing directly north, and that's exactly the direction that we're heading to get up to Redding. I mean, uh, we're in Redding. Uh, the direction that we're heading to get up to uh, uh, Mount Shasta. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set my HSI to 340. Set my heading bug to 340. All right, let's take a look at all. Oil pressure's in the green, fuel pressure's up, oil temperature's in the green. Ammeter's good. Cylinder head temperature's not in the green yet, but it will be soon when we do a uh, run up. So we'll go ahead and uh, run us out to the runway and then we will uh, hold short, do run up, and then we will uh, go ahead and commence with uh, departure to the north. Parking brakes released, here we go. Uh, this sim has these, uh, you know, it really gonna sit right in my way, right in my way. Stay there. Luckily, we're right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop just short of the runway here and do the run up. I don't have anyone behind me and I can do run up really fast, so I'm not gonna pull off the taxiway to do that. I'm gonna hold the brake, pull on that guy. Okay, I'll go ahead and put our strobes on. All right, parking brake is set. I'm gonna go ahead and do the run up. All right, I'm gonna run the engine up to 2,000 RPM and then we'll check the magnetos. All right, there's 2,000. Let's go ahead and check the, the left mag. Got about 120 RPM drop right mag, drop is the same, back to both mags, back up to 2,000 RPM, we're going to exercise the prop, all right, and now I'm going to pull out the carb heat, make sure the RPM drops, very good, okay, idle check, 
Okay, we got 600 RPM at idle. Go ahead and advance back to 1,000 RPM. All right, we'll do our pre-takeoff checks. Okay, make sure elevator trim is set to neutral. Put out a notch of flaps, visually verify that. Up they go, down they go. All flight controls, ailerons are good. Elevator's good. Check the other side, elevator's good. I mean, <laughs> aileron's good. Okay, and we are on left tank for takeoff. Auxiliary fuel pump is on. Landing lights are on. Nav lights are on. All right, gear switch is in the down position. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to tower. Running tower, Comanche 66 Papa is ready to go. Runway 34 for north departure. Reading Tower Comanche 66 Papa ready for departure to the north at runway 34. Comanche 66 Papa wind 256 at 6. Traffic is Cessna Caravan on final. Departure to the north approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 34. Clear for takeoff in front of the caravan runway 34, Comanche 66 Papa. Okay, I gotta move fast because uh, there's a caravan waiting to land. Comanche 66 Papa, please acknowledge. Cleared for takeoff runway tree for Comanche 66 Papa. Here we go. off the center line a little bit here. There we go. Up we go. Go ahead and accelerate to about 100 miles an hour. Okay, positive rate of climb. Gear coming up. All right, landing gear's up and locked. Continue for North Departure, Comanche 66 Papa. Reading Tower, Comanche 66 Papa, continue for North Departure. All right, flaps are up, we're clean. I'm gonna go ahead and trim us for about 110 miles an hour. Just keep, a, keep an eye on the cylinder head temperature. Put in a little bit of rudder trim because we're rolling to the left a little bit here. All right. Very nice. Beautiful day above Redding. You can see Mount Shasta right off the nose in the distance there. It's one of the highest mountains on uh, on the west coast. It's over 14,000 feet high. We're not gonna fly that high. We're just gonna kind of fly around it. I'm gonna um, turn down the radio volume. All right, what a beautiful plane. I'm gonna pull the prop back to 2400 RPM now. Frequency change approved, Comanche 66 Papa, good day. Reading Tower Comanche 66 Papa frequency change. Uh, 
I'm going to start leaning the mixture a little bit. This is a gorgeous place. So yeah, this is this is a place that I actually spend a lot of time in real life. Just gorgeous mountains, gorgeous lakes. for my soul as piloting an airplane. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited at the prospect of going back and getting all of my, uh, all of my ratings, uh, finishing my private pilot license, uh, first of all, uh, getting my instrument rating, my commercial rating, my multi-engine ratings, and then all of my instructor ratings. I'm really looking forward to all of that. It's been a long time coming. I've been studying this stuff uh, for 30 years. Tens of thousands of hours of simulator time. Uh, well, uh, we just took off from Redding, California, uh, and we're gonna fly up uh, just up around Mount Shasta here. Uh, you can see Mount Shasta right up ahead of us. It's a massive volcano. So there's definitely some seismic activity up here from time to time. But it's a gorgeous place. Absolutely gorgeous. Man, this thing climbs like a rocket. We're already through 6,000 feet. Yeah, so we're just going to look around up here. Uh, we're, this is uh, Lake Shasta that we're looking at right now. Uh, this is the largest man-made uh, lake in California. Uh, it provides a lot of water to, um, to Northern California. It's massive. It got so low, though, in the bad drought that we had two years ago, we thought it was going to completely dry up. We lost a lot of water. California is a very dry place. It's always kind of had problems with that, but of course, uh, climate change is making it a million times worse. All right, so I am going to level us off at, uh, let's level off at 7,500 feet for right now. And we'll go take a look at uh, Mount Shasta and see what other kind of what other kind of things we can see. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get us established in a cruise. So I'm going to pull the propeller back. Uh, let's get like a. This thing is ridiculously fast for what it is, too. It always kind of blows my mind. <laughs> Let's get settled here, and then I'll, uh, I'll continue pulling the power back for about 65, 65% 65 cruise.
So let's just very briefly uh, switch the autopilot on to get uh, to get us all uh, set for cruise, and then I'll uh, take back over manual control. This plane has a very simple autopilot. Uh, it's an S Tech 30 series. two axis autopilot so it'll hold altitude and it'll hold heading it'll track a nav source kind of <laughs> but it's just for so you can take your hands off the plane for a few seconds to get uh, to get everything set the way you want it all right so we're gonna look down here at the JPI and uh, get a cruise going here so I'm gonna keep pulling the uh, Keep pulling the power back until we indicate about 65 percent um, horsepower, and that's right under the tack there. You can see. So you see, we've got 65 horsepower at 2,040 RPM. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to run the lean find uh, to figure out what the best um, fuel economy uh, setting for the mixture is going to be. So we're going to very slowly start pulling it back as the exhaust gas temperature starts to rise you'll notice the uh the fuel flow starts to go down and when the engine reaches its hottest temperature it will give us an indication of leanest and then we know that uh that we're at the most uh, fuel efficient mixture setting and then we can just kind of leave it there so it should be right around 12.3 gallons per hour. So 12 12.8, 12.7, 12.6, 12.5, 12.4. There's 12.3. Looks like we might get a little leaner than that. 12.2. Twelve point one. There's twelve. Eleven point nine. Eleven point eight. Eleven point seven. There we go. So eleven point seven. I'm going to enrich in it just a little bit. So this number right here on the left, this one, the, the negative five, the negative four, that tells us where we are in relation to that peak temperature. So we want to keep that around zero as much as we can. And then the number to the right of it is our fuel flow in gallons per hour. So we can use both of those numbers to keep the mixture uh, kind of centered where we want it to be. All right, so we've got a 63, 63% uh, power cruise. And we are making, look at that folks. We're at seven, okay. Just hear me out, okay? We're at 7,500 feet. We are making about 163 miles per hour indicated airspeed. Now remember, our indicated airspeed is always gonna be lower than our true airspeed because as you go higher, the air gets thinner. So you can move forward faster, but the air is not thick enough to hit the pitot tube, which gives you that indication hard enough, so it indicates slower. So I've got a nice tool on my tablet right here that will give us our real-time true airspeed. So our true airspeed is 180, fluctuating between 181 and 182 miles per hour. So that gives us about 15 and a half miles per gallon right now, which is astounding for an airplane. I mean, it's really good gas mileage. And that's just a 65% power, you know? If we did a 75% power cruise, you know, we'd be up over 190 easy. It's a slick little airplane. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and disengage the autopilot and go back in the manual. Okay, I want to trim down just a little bit. 
Uh, one of the things that I love about these old Pipers is the, um, instead of having a trim wheel, uh, kind of down by your right knee, as most airplanes do, it has a trim crank up on the ceiling uh, that you, you spin uh, to change the elevator trim. That's exactly how the old uh, Piper Cherokee that I learned how to fly in real life was. It was a lot like this plane, just a lot less power. The plane that I did most of my flight training. And I've flown a lot of different planes in real life, but the one that I did my actual sanctioned flight training in uh, was a Piper Cherokee. And it was an old one, so it was very similar to this in a lot of ways. Lots of good memories. It's getting a little bit bumpy over the uh, mountains here because we're getting up drafts. As the wind hits the mountains, it gets deflected upward. So as we fly over the mountains, we are getting hit with those up drafts. All right, let's take a look at the outside of this beauty for just a second. It might be a little loud when I go to the outside view, so don't get, uh, don't be surprised by it. So here we go. Look at that beauty. It's like an old classic car. So stylish. So yeah, so now I want to buy one of these someday. To haul, uh, to haul the family around in. Uh, it's just got four seats, but it's a true, uh, true four-place aircraft. A lot of smaller planes that have uh, four seats in them, they don't actually have the power to haul four adults and their bags and full fuel. Uh, this thing does. It's a, it's what's called a true four-place aircraft. So you can put four adults in here with their bags, fill the main tanks, probably not the auxiliary tanks, but the main tanks at least, you can fill those full um, and still be under uh, max gross takeoff weight, depending on how heavy, you know, your adults are. But it's a pretty amazing craft. And you can pick them up for in really good shape for not a whole lot of money. Like I was saying earlier, something in this shape is probably going to go for, you know, 150000 something like that. So absolutely within the realm of um, reality, <laughs> more so than other airplanes. I know that sounds like a lot of money, but... Um, and it is a lot of money, but when you think about what new airplanes cost, it's, you know, it's, it's a real bargain buying one of these. <laughs> and they're just as fast. They're just as fast as just about anything out there. And people talk about how comfortable that they are, that the cabin's actually really quite wide. And that it's a, it's a very comfortable uh, family cross-country cruising aircraft. So now you can see this additional little mountain next to Mount Shasta right here. That's called Black Butte. Uh, it's an additional cinder cone or upwelling of lava from the, um, the Mount Shasta volcano system. Holy... Wow. Okay. Holy Toledo, it's bouncy. Yeah, so we're basically flying up I-5 right now, um, which is the, uh, the highway that comes up the middle of California. Uh, and it's, it's a beautiful drive. It's a beautiful flight too, <laughs> but it's also uh, a very beautiful drive. That's Castle Crags right there, that rock formation right there. Uh, we've gone hiking up there before, and it is 
it is majestic, to say the least. I'll give you another look at it right there. It's so impressive when you're coming down the road and there's this corner that you come around and you see it for the first time. Just these bare, jagged rocks sitting there uh, and it's just like breathtaking. All right, so here's Mount Shasta. It's a big mountain. Like I said before, it's over 14,000 feet high. Definitely in Alps territory. But it kind of sits out here by itself. Look at that view. Just amazing. And then this, uh, this little thing hanging off the side of Mount Shasta, uh, right here, this like thing that comes off uh, to the northwest of it right here, that's, uh, that peak is called Shastina. It's, uh, it's a peak in its own right, but it's attached to uh, Mount Shasta. But Black Butte, I've never done it before, but Black Butte right here in front of us uh, is very popular to, uh, to hike up to the top of. I would definitely do that someday. Get some nice pictures. That little lake down there, I believe. Actually, I, I, I don't remember what that lake's called. <laughs> I don't remember what that lake's called. It's pretty though. You can see a boat down there. Yeah, someone's out in their boat down there. Boats are cool, but I'd rather be in the air. And then when you get up, uh, up north of Black Butte, uh, there is a little town up here. No joke, I'm not kidding. It's called Weed. W-E-E-D is the name of the town. And the town is just full of, like, marijuana puns. The shops and stuff like that. Um, but it's, it's a cool little town. Um, but that's the, uh, the junction uh, between I-5, which uh, will take you kind of west into Oregon. Um, and Highway 97, which is the one that I normally use, which takes you straight north up through central Oregon. And that's how, uh, that's how we get up to Spokane is on 97, but that junction is in Weed, so just right up here. All right, so I'm gonna fly us up here a little bit more and then I'm gonna turn us around so we can kind of look at the north face of Shasta. getting like a downdraft. Mm. It's making it hard to maintain altitude. But yeah, man, the way this thing flies, it is unlike 
anything that I've ever felt in a sim before. I mean, you really want to feel like you're flying an airplane, this is it. You know, I mean, there's no force feedback or anything like that, like you'd actually have in, in a real aircraft. You know, you don't feel it pulling against the yoke or anything. But something about the visuals of the way this thing moves almost makes that illusion. It's a very, it's a physical sort of thing. It's a physical feeling to flying this thing that I don't, it, you, you seldom get in a simulator. Runs so smooth, folks. I'm telling you, I gotta go. It's been fun seeing you fly through the skies again. Ah, you too, dude. I love you very much, my friend. I've missed you uh, dearly. I miss those old times more than you know. Um, it was a simpler, innocent time that I will cherish forever. Ah, oh, shit, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> ah. Not while I'm flying. <laughs> I love you, man. Take care of yourself. Peace, love, and all the good things to you. Hmm. Got me right in the feels, man. I love human beings and the relationships that we forge as we go through life. Don't ever take anybody for granted. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn around. That is what makes it worth it, Austin. You got it. Pull up my, uh... Come on now, stream manager. I should probably pay attention to flying, huh? Looking down at my tablet. It's probably about time to switch fuel tanks anyway. I'm going to go ahead and roll us back to the right and head us back toward the mountain. But you do have to remember, folks, as good as modern flight sims have gotten, uh, and they do, of course, use these modern flight sims for flight training purposes. None of this, none of this is any replacement for instruction with an actual certified flight instructor. Don't forget that. Learning how to fly one of these things in the sim is going to serve you a long way towards making your transition into the cockpit easier. It's going to teach you a lot of good fundamentals, but um, it is not uh, not the be-all, end-all. So this is the uh, the north face of uh, Mount Shasta. We'll head back down to Reading, or maybe further. I don't know. Depends on what we feel like doing. 
I'm having fun tooling around. I could climb a little higher and we could go around the north side of the mountain and come out uh, the other way. Why don't we go ahead and do that? So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Push the RPM back up to 2400. I'm going to go ahead and trim us up to about 120 miles an hour. So we get to balloon up really fast. It's 2000 feet per minute right there while we're waiting for the speed to bleed off. Nuts. There's a thousand feet per minute at 100 and, about 130 miles an hour. Let that speed bleed off just a little bit more. And then we'll trim for, what did I say, 120? I think that'll probably be plenty. Check out our engine temps. Everything's in the green still. Yeah, I'm looking forward to coming up to seeing you guys, Austin. It's been a long time. Oh, I need to switch to, uh, switch to the other fuel tank. That's one of the reasons we're leaning to the right. All right, we're up above 9,000 feet already. Look at that mountain. That's a severe mountain. Mountain flying's a whole different kind of thing. We're kind of lucky with Mount Shasta because it's kind of standing out there by itself. But uh, with single engine aircraft like this, you always want to be looking out and thinking, if my engine quits, where am I going to put this plane down? So you always kind of got to be thinking about that. That's really hard when you're you know, really up in the mountain. Because, you know, a aircraft, this engine has died. It'll glide really well. It'll glide really well for a while, but it's got to come down eventually. Up above 10,000 feet now. Normally I would turn off my landing lights at this point above 10,000 feet, but we're not going to be up here for long, so I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just doing it to come around this, uh, come around this flank of the mountain here. Look at that beautiful mountain. I'm going to go ahead and uh, trim us into a descent again. And come back to about 2,000 RPM.
kind of get back to a cruising configuration. Man down. Get down. That's too fast. It is hard to keep this thing trimmed right now for a consistent descent rate. So we keep getting those uh, updrafts. Okay, so I'm going to direct to us. So like waypoint, we want um, see like a kilo, Romeo, Delta, Delta. Well, oh, this is what I want. Direct to activate. All right, so now we can follow the GPS back to uh, back to Reading, and maybe we'll just call it quits for now. Got 183 knots over the ground. Be back to Reading in about 20 minutes. just a little bit. I want to kind of stay out of these mountains here. Come on, turn. Turn. There we go. Eighty five hundred feet. No, I'm glad I didn't say it. I was about to say uh, the air seems to be smoothing out, but I didn't say it because I didn't want to jinx myself. And now I'm glad I didn't say it. Well, I guess it doesn't matter because it's still choppy.
passing through 8,000 feet. And come down to 6,500 feet. We got 6,500 feet. We got 500 feet to go. We'll level us off and then we'll uh, establish cruise again. Five hundred feet. Get us trimmed for level flight, and we'll set the autopilot again while we deal with uh, leaning the mixture. Hey, okay, autopilot, master switch on, and wait for the thing to boot up. Heading hold mode and engage the altitude hold. Alright, so let's go ahead and do lean find again. It's 14 gallons per hour right there. Six, thirteen point five, thirteen point four, thirteen point three, thirteen point two, point one, thirteen, twelve point nine, twelve point eight, point seven, point six, point five, point three, point two, point one. Zero, eleven point nine, eleven point eight, eleven point seven, eleven point six, eleven point five is leanest, or eleven point six rather. All right, there's leanest mixture. Fourteen thirty is going to be our temperature. Okay. 
Okay. Cruise power is set. So I'm going to switch back to Reading Tower. They've got to be in range by now. Yeah, Reading is. Stop landing. Reading Tower Comanche 66 Papa is tree one miles north, 6,500 feet with golf to land. Comanche 66 Papa, Reading Tower. Altimeter 299 decimal 9 or 2 wind 256 at 6. Make left traffic runway 34. Make left traffic runway 34. Comanche 66 Papa. Make left downwind runway tree for Comanche 66 Papa. we've covered in that short amount of time. We were just flying around that mountain. We did a loop around that mountain and we are already out of there. Cruising. On a Tuesday afternoon. Shasta again. Starting to say, <laughs> uh, this is like a half hour ago now. Started talking about the frame rate um, of this aircraft. 
I was worried and I had heard from some people that there was a bit of a frame rate hit uh, using this plane because it is so uh, complex, but I am telling you just the opposite is what I have found. I think that this thing runs smoother than a lot of the default aircraft. Um, I don't know if that would be the same on a lower end system. I mean, not saying that I've got the highest end rig there is. I mean, I don't. I mean, I would definitely call mine a solid, you know, you know, 75 to 80 percent. If 100 percent is, you know, the fastest PC out there. Um, but yeah, I have noticed, yeah, that it seems to run smoother a lot of the time than a lot of the default aircraft. So, um, yeah, if performance is a worry um, for you, I, I wouldn't be worried about this aircraft at all. I think it's, uh, I think it's great. It's smooth as butter for me. I haven't flown it in any like real high density scenery areas like in, uh, you know, cities or anything like that. You know, I've mostly been doing, you know, rural flying and mountain flying, stuff like that. That's not quite as graphics intensive. So maybe there'd be a bigger difference there. Um, but I don't do a whole lot of that type of flying, so it's really not a concern for me. I guess I should test it in some of those higher density areas um, just to see. Okay, I need, to, uh, I need to start dropping out of the sky here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, trim us down. I'm actually going to trim us down about a thousand feet per minute at this point. We're picking up quite a bit of speed. Yeah, so this will be there in five minutes. I should have started descending sooner. I'll pull the power back a bit and pull it back to 2020. Twenty twenty for right now. This autopilot just barely works. <laughs> uh, I'm using it uh, for for lateral control right now, and I'm controlling uh, our descent manually. But it's uh, it's it's kind of holding. It's kind of holding heading. Again, you know, the autopilot and this thing. I mean, it's just meant to you know reduce your workload a little bit. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's, there's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't have any, you know, it's, it's not like a, you know, like a, a KAP or a Garmin autopilot. It's, it's very rudimentary and basic. It'll hold your heading. It'll track a VOR or your, um, or your nav path that you have set in your GPS, or, um, or I mean, and it'll, it'll hold your altitude, but there's no, there's no vertical navigation control of any kind. It's literally just an autopilot altitude hold. That's it. So you gotta, you have to climb, you have to descend. That's all manual.
be landing pretty quick here. So y'all make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in the upright and locked position. Seat belts are fastened securely over your lap. Keep hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. All right, I'm gonna disconnect the autopilot completely at this point. There's the runway, so we're gonna be flying left traffic. Reading Tower, Comanche 66 Papa is entering left downwind to runway 34. I need to really slow down. Mixture is back to full. We're under 3,000 feet. The airport elevation is uh, 5,000 feet, uh, 500 feet above sea level. So our pattern altitude is going to be about 1,500 feet. I'm going to start trimming the nose up just a little bit. Let's get about a 500 foot per minute descent rate, so we can properly slow down here. All right, there's the airport right down there. We are on a nice downwind. Once we hit, um, I mean, technically once we hit 150 miles an hour, I can put the landing gear out, but I'm gonna not put that much stress on it. I'm gonna wait till we hit about 140 and then I'll put them down. And they're effective speed brakes, of course. There's 140 gears coming down. All right, landing gears down and locked. Passing through 2,000 feet. Okay, make sure gumps, so we've got gas, auxiliary fuel pump is on, fuel is on the fullest tank, uh, undercarriage is down, mixture is fully forward. Clear to land runway 34, Comanche 66 Papa. All right, there's that first notch of flaps. Got 110 miles an hour. Keep bleeding that speed out. I'm gonna trim the nose up just a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna turn base to final at this point. We're watching for traffic. There's 100 miles an hour. I'm gonna add a little bit of power back in. I'm gonna put in my second notch of flaps. Goodbye. Running tower, Comanche 66 Papa is turning base to final runway 34. There it is. Ah, that's not my best final rollout. Okay, I'm going to trim the nose up just a little bit more. And we're going to get 80 miles an hour. Running Tower Comanche 66 Papa is on short final runway 34. 
Okay, last notch of flaps. You go, just verify gear is down. Flaps are out. Pulling that power off to get 80 miles an hour. Controlling speed with pitch, controlling vertical speed with throttle. About 81 miles an hour. A little more power. This is a notoriously hard plane to land, and I have, I have, uh, I've, I've done some doozies already in it. I leave a little bit of power on. We're gonna fly it right down to the ground. Right down to the ground. Pull the power out. We're in ground effect. All right. Not horrible. A little bit of a wheelbarrow landing. Would have liked to flare a little bit more, but not bad. All right, flaps are up. Auxiliary fuel pump is off. Okay, landing lights are off. Strobes are off. All right, we are clear of the runway. Going to 121.7, Comanche 66 Papa, good day. 121.7, Comanche 66 Papa. Goodbye. Reading ground, Comanche 66 Papa, request taxi to general aviation parking. Reading ground, Comanche 66 Papa, taxi to parking. Comanche 66 Papa, taxi to general aviation parking using taxiway Alpha Bravo. Taxi General Aviation Parking, the away taxiway Alpha Bravo. Taxiing to General Aviation Parking via Taxiway Alpha Bravo. Landing us safely. <laughs> You're welcome, Boston. I'm not a bad pilot. <laughs> Has a hard plane to land, too. It's just got this weird quirk about it, man. When it hits ground effect, it just wants to float. It just wants to float. So you got to be careful because uh, in a lot of airplanes, you know, when you, when you go into the flare, you know, you chop the power, you know, even before you hit ground effect and you can kind of, you know, slowly, gently sink down through ground effect to the ground. Not this plane. You got to fly it to the ground. You got to fly it down through ground effect. Because it's got a really efficient uh, laminar flow wing, so it um, uh, it really wants to fly. It doesn't want to stop flying. So it rides that cushion of air that's right between the wings and the ground when you get down low like that. It rides it really nicely. <laughs> but the problem with that is once you chop the power, it doesn't just gradually... Uh, it doesn't gradually come down through that layer of air. It just falls. It just stops flying at some point and slams onto the runway. So there's a real technique to landing this aircraft, which I'm, I'm so glad because I've read about, you know, the Comanche a lot, you know, from actual real world pilots. And they talk about that characteristic. And I'm just so thankful that uh, A2A, um, they, they modeled that they modeled that amazingly it's like i was prepared for it the first time i flew this thing because i had read the accounts of real world pilots and people had said that when you fly this sim of this aircraft uh watch out for that because it's just like the real thing again i have not flown this aircraft in real life but based on what i have heard from other real world pilots uh this thing it it really really uh it behaves exactly as described Uh, yeah, so we got all those switches off. Down, make sure the trim.
Trim is set back to neutral. Let's see. Yeah, well, you listen to warnings well. <laughs> yeah. I do a lot of reading about airplanes. It's my, it's one of my biggest passions in life. So I have done a lot of study over the years. This punk in the King Air is right in my landing box. Is it not? Yes, it's right in my landing box. Why would they tell me to park here? Parking box, not landing box. Oh, I have to go park somewhere else. Thanks a lot, ground control. All right, I'm gonna go down to the end. I'm gonna go down to the end and park. I'm gonna find my own parking spot. Something done right, you gotta do it yourself. All right, I'm gonna park right between this caravan and the Daher. Uh, forward just a little bit more. All right. <laughs> Doesn't matter who ground to the air. Someone always parks like a jerk. You said it, man. That's uh, that's the way of the world, unfortunately. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the uh, side windows for a little bit of ventilation. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start the shutdown procedure. Parking brake is set. We're gonna run the engine up to 1800 RPM. Hold it there for about 20 seconds. Five seconds. 10 seconds. 15 seconds. 20 seconds. All right. I'm gonna pull the RPM down to 1200. Let it idle there for just a minute, watch the cylinder head temperatures, make sure that they're coming down. That's the cylinder head temperature gauge right there. You want to make sure it's certainly not rising. It'll come down a little bit. And we also look at the cylinder head temperatures on here, that's the bottom numbers on the JPI. Well, they're not really coming down, but they're not going up either. So, all right, so we're okay. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull out the mixture. Okay, switch off the ignition. Turn off the rotating beacon. Switch off the avionics. Switch off the uh, fuel selector. All right, go ahead and open the door. All right, so let's make sure everything is shut down properly. All lights are off, ignition is off, mixture is out, throttle's right where I left it, propeller controls all the way forward, autopilot and avionics switches are off, flaps are up. Trim is neutral. Gear selector is in the down position. Fuel selectors are off. Master switch off. All right, let's go ahead and tie the plane down now. So 
we'll get back out the tablet to go into walk around mode. We're going to want to go under here, tie that wing down, put the chocks on. Shocks on, tied down. All right, back to the back of the plane. All right. <laughs> That's a lot of bugles, my friend. All right, so we are down. Back in the cockpit, and we can take one more look and make sure that everything is set. Uh, install the gust lock, which is just a bungee cord, and that is for real, the way you do that. Uh, let's see. Okay. All lights are off. Good to go. All right. Well, thank you, November 59er66 Papa. You have been a glorious steed to ride through the skies once again. I put, let's see, we put some more time on it. Well, of course we did. Yeah, now we've got 8.7 hours on the airframe, seven hours on the engine. So yeah, uh, we're, uh, we're racking up some time. Racking up some time in this guy, so anyway. All right. Well, uh, thank you to everyone who came and hung out on the stream today. Ghost Goose, it was good to see you. You've changed your username. Um, I will make note of that. Your Spidey something, swinging Spidey, swinging, slinging Spidey, something like that. I'll know it's you next time. I'll know that that's, that's Ghost Goose. Uh, due to eight, my very, very good friend, uh, miss you dearly. Um, thanks for coming and hanging out for a few minutes on the stream. Uh, hope to see you again at some point. And Mr. Vortex, Austin Smith himself, thank you for uh, flying the friendly skies with me today. It was good having you along uh, in the cockpit with me. I look forward to seeing you guys up there in a couple of weeks. I miss you and love you all. Until we meet again, please take care of yourself. Take care of those around you. I wish you all nothing but peace. Love, happiness, and all the good things. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.